Welcome in Wiffle Ball fans and welcome to FLT Tonight. I'm your host, FLT Vice Commish Tanner Peterson. We've had a great tournament so far. Pool play just wrapping up in the snake game happening as OPO defeated the guards. But now it's time for the postseason play and we got a great episode here. We're going to first reveal the brackets and we're going to be joined by some players from those teams seeing how they, uh, how they think they're going to fare in the afternoon. And then we've got a very special treat. We're going to be joined by FLT Commissioner Kyler Stork. So let's get into it. And let's take a peek at the standings here before we look at the bracket. The Laycocks and Mambas lead their pools and will both have a first round bye. And will both have one seeds. And now let's reveal the bracket. As mentioned, the Laycocks and Mambas will have the one seed for their respective pools. The first game of the afternoon postseason will be the Diesels as the three seed in the Fox pool versus the Apes as the two seed in the Lake pool. Now let's join Apes captain Tanner Peterson here to see how he's feeling about his team's postseason play. Tanner, can you hear me? Wow, that is the most beautiful voice I have ever heard. And yes, I can hear you, Tanner. You're sounding very crystal clear. So Tanner, you guys were in the biggest upset of the morning, the Laycocks over the Apes. You were quoted saying that you guys were going to go 2-0, and get the one seed, get the easy buy. Uh, how, how are you feeling? Obviously shocked after upset by the Laycocks there. But uh, what are your thoughts going into the afternoon? Will you guys be able to bounce back? Well, obviously, you never want to lose a game, and especially one that has so much importance riding on it, like the one seed. But, you know, we'll we'll take our fair draw. I mean, we by far got outplayed there by Matt Ogden and Caden Stork. I mean, terrific, terrific band of footballers out there. That's why they're one of the greatest. They're, they're like the second greatest franchise, I'd say. Uh, but going into the afternoon, you know, me and Mark, we've talked. We've been talking, and uh, we're just going to keep playing our brand of wiffle ball, you know. Mark's going to keep uh, striking everyone out. I'm going to keep standing there in the field and looking good, and we're just going to gonna keep keep with our way. We're not going to change anything up. I'm not coming in to pitch, that's for sure. So uh, we're just going to keep the same strategy, and hopefully uh, it'll come through uh, for us like it did last year and three years ago. And Tanner, you guys faced one of your biggest rivals, the Diesels, in the first round game, a team that you are very familiar with. Uh, what are your thoughts on that game? We know it's going to be a pitching duel out there between uh, Lipka and Mark, but how do you think it's going to fare for the Apes? Well, Patrick Lipka is one of my least favorite players to uh, face in the uh, FLT. I can't get a hit off anyone, but when Lipka's on the mound, I might not even bother going to the plate. No use up there, but yeah, it's just going to be up to Mark and see, uh, make sure he's throwing the ball well. I'm really worried about their uh, star outfielder, Adam Willie. He's, he's, been, uh, he's been scouted the morning, and he is looking way better than expected, and uh, I wouldn't be, uh, wouldn't be surprised if he put up a few dong shots on Mark. But, you know, we'll see how Mark can roll on the offense. I'm planning on doing my usual strategy of, of swinging for the fences, of course. And uh, we'll just hope Mark can do his usual thing of taking walks and just getting on base so I can knock him in. It should be a good one. Thanks for joining us, Tanner. Uh, we'll see you in the afternoon, and good luck to you and the Apes. Now let's get back into the bracket, as the next game will be the three seed of the Lake Pool versus the two seed in the Fox Pool, which will be Team Moisty at the Legacy. And before we go any further, we're going to be joined by a player from one of the one seeds, as we've got Mamba's captain, Kyler Stork. Kyler, how are you doing today? I'm pretty good, Tanner. How about yourself? Oh, doing great here. Talking a wiffle ball, nothing better we could be doing. So, uh, this morning you guys took home the one seed in your pool. Uh, talk about how you guys came together and uh, accomplished that. Uh, well, first of all, we hit the ball pretty well. Uh, when you hit the ball, well, you can't really complain about that. I was I was expecting to win over Ovio, but I didn't expect to win that big. I thought Sam Fisher would be a little better than he performed, but... You never know as a rookie what you're going to do in the FLT. Um, after we won that, I felt kind of confident going into the Diesels game. But the Diesels have been our rivals for years. They beat us in the championship in 2016, and they knocked us out of the postseason in 2017. So we kind of played with the chip on our shoulder, and I think you guys could see that as we knocked them out of the one seed, getting the one seed in our pool. So I, th I thought we played pretty strong in pool play, and I'm feeling pretty good about this afternoon. 
because if you can hit Patrick Lipka, you can pretty much hit anybody in the FLT. All right, so speaking of Lipka and the Diesels, you guys will either play the Diesels or the Apes. Do you have a preference of who you would rather play? Yeah, um, which team has Adam Willie again? I believe yeah, the I would rather Adam Willie. <laughs> yeah. Adam, I mean, he, he's all right, but if you line him up on paper, I don't think I would want to see Mark Ogden six times, seven times uh, as I'm batting because of his that nasty slider. And I would much rather play a team that we have already beat and that's our rival and to knock them out of the winner's bracket because of what they have done to uh, my franchise the last two years. And that me and Adam, you know, we have beef all along, so it would be, it'd be nice to knock Adam to lose his record too. Some say it's hard to beat a team twice, but you seem very confident. So speaking of uh, pitching, you said you're going to face good pitching no matter what. Uh, what's the Mamba's pitching strategy going to be going into the postseason? Um, it's tough to say because Alex, you know, he's got a good arm, but when we brought him in the first game, he was kind of all over the place. So... We don't really know what to expect in the postseason. If he gets his pitches down, we will for sure just throw him nonstop because he's pretty unhittable when he throws that nice little drop ball. Uh, he was he was looking good before the tournament, but then when we brought him in versus Ovio, yeah, he was all over the place. So right now, I think we're just going to go with me. I mean, I pitched pretty good in the morning, so we'll just see how it goes I mean who knows Brett might even get in there in the before the tournament he was he was looking much better than in previous years so I mean we don't know it's the postseason whatever happens happens we'll just take it inning by inning but I think to start off the first uh, playoff game I think I'll be on the mound for inning number one all right well thank you for joining us we'll let you get back to your team good luck to you and the Mambas in the postseason later today I appreciate you, Tanner. Yep, good luck to your team as well. All right, thank you very much. Yep, see you around. Coming up next, FLTV host Tanner Peterson sits down with FLT Commissioner Kyler Stork. Welcome in, fans, as we've got a special treat here. We've got FLT Commissioner Kyler Stork on the line. Kyler, how you doing? It's been a great morning oh, for the tournament. Good. How's it been? Oh, yeah. Uh, I thought I thought so far. I mean, a lot of good competition, a lot of good games. Uh, uh, what else? New? I wouldn't say new rivalries, but I mean, there's been some beef with some teams, but that's expected in the FLT. But all around, I thought the pool play was pretty competitive, pretty fun, like usual. Can't complain. And uh, the biggest change that the fans have noticed is probably the new field. Uh, how do you think the the wider field and the kind of changing of the scenery uh, has affected the play. Yeah, um, this new Erickson field, uh, in my opinion, I kind of like it. Uh, it's it's much different than Stork Field, as Stork Field was like the kite shape, and as you mentioned before, how this new field is kind of wider. So it, it definitely makes a difference if you have three players on your team, is what I've noticed from the games that I've watched and played. Um, because uh, in the old old stadium you really only needed two because it wasn't that wide but now with the width and not so much on the length but you definitely would need three fielders out there to help you uh get best chance to win in the field speaking of There's, the uh three fielders i mean boy the tournament's really blown up this year we have eight teams pretty much all of them have three players um how, how is the the larger tournament field impacted the play um, I first of all, I love it, man. More competition, uh, expanding the tournament every year gets bigger and better. Um, I feel like with the eight teams, there's way more competition, and it's not just heavily favored towards the apes or diesels anymore. Um, with all the new teams, uh, as we saw in pool play, there's been a lot of close games. I mean, shoot, the apes lost to the Laycocks, and the diesels lost to a rookie team, so. We're, we're shaping in for a good afternoon, and I feel like uh, eight teams have definitely been uh, something positive and something something that we can take away for even the years to come. Yeah, i got to be able to play against anyone out there. Uh, with eight teams, you never know who you're going to play, and you can't really set things up based on that. It's just luck of the draw, pretty much. 
Uh, but my producer yep. just handed me a note here. It looks like the FLT just announced that there are going to be some special guests uh, coming for the afternoon. Uh, could you talk a little about those? Yeah, so this year, uh, kind of started last year as we posted on our Twitter and everything. And uh, the news guy, Jim Madsen from Peoria, kind of reached out to us. And we usually aren't on our phones during the Fox Lake tournament during the day. So last year, we kind of just played and then we all like posted stuff after like usual and we saw a message that he had messaged us in the morning and asking us about the tournament and he wanted to come out so we were kind of bummed that we missed him uh, he did tweet about us but this year he got in contact with us like two or three months before the tournament and he really wanted to come out so um we're happy to have him here he's going to be coming soon to uh he's going to uh interview us and show show the field and talk a little bit about us you'll probably interview me or tanner probably i'm guessing the vice commissioner commissioner and then we also have a pantograph which is the local newspaper around bloomington um he's his name is lewis and he's going to come out and take some pictures of us and maybe interview us at the end for the paper so that's pretty exciting as now we kind of put fox lake tournament on the map not just in like the social media map but actual like real world map all right, well, that's great to get the FLT some exposure out there. Uh, hopefully it'll add to uh, the pageantry and add some more uh, FLT fans out there. Well, thanks for joining us, Kyler. We'll let you get back to work on the afternoon. Uh, good luck uh, running the tournament for the rest of the day, and I'm um, hoping for a successful postseason. All righty, thank you very much.